Welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Matthias Peper and I am the CEO of Invisolution. We are focused on digital treatment planning in Alina Orthodontics. The today's topic is Anchorage Principles in Alina Orthodontics and I hope you enjoy the video. So in my today's topic, I would like to explain a little more about the artificial intelligence, when and how it should be questioned, and what you can do, and you will review the digital treatment plan. And today I show you three different clean checks, and I would like to explain with these clean checks how you, should, you can control it even better and how you can make the most out of them. So we need to understand that the digital treatment plan as a symbiosis of the technician, the artificial intelligence and the algorithms of this software. And what you need to understand is that at the moment you send the pictures, the scan and um, the prescription form to the company, there is a mix of algorithms, artificial intelligence and the technician that creates the, the digital treatment plan for you. I show you the first clean check to explain you the algorithms of the software. When we look at this clean check, it's a typical first clean check you receive. So you take the clean check and normally when you review a clean check, you press on play, you review everything and it's like, okay, it looks Okay, you review out of this position, you press on play, it looks fine, you look this position and so on. But you always need to control what are the algorithms really doing. And if we review this clean check differently, we take this position and that's very important for you. You go to the left and to the right fast and you zoom your clean check. And now you can see what happens in the clean check. You see movements everywhere. And you go a little faster to the left and to the right and you can see, yes, there are movements everywhere in every part. And this is very, very typical because you need to understand that the software is putting hundred thousands of uh, measurement points on every on any tooth and now the software is measuring everything by itself and calculating the clean check. That means the software identifies if there is a premolar rotated, the software identifies if there is uh, if, a premolar, if a premolar needs to be uh, uprighted, the software identifies the curve of speed, uh, the arch form and everything. And that's very very smart but you are the one, you make the decision if you would like to, or what is the most important part for the patient and what kinds of priorities you need to set. And if you look at the screen check, you have movements everywhere. Look at the movement. You have rotation 2.4, rotation 2.5. You have an intrusion of 2.6. You have an extrusion of 2.7. You have an extrusion of 3.6. You have a root uprighting movement of three, four, so movements everywhere. But the big question is, what is the right priority for this patient? Isn't it most important to get out of the deep bite situation to really achieve lower anterior intrusion? And does it really make sense to have so many movements in posteriors? Um, and is the intercuspidation better at the end than it's at the beginning? And very often you can reduce this less predictable movements just take it out if it's not needed. So what we are doing very often, so we control the clean check and then we decide are all these movements needed or are we able to reduce them? And um, important for that is also to check the intercuspidation at the beginning. And when you see that the intercuspidation of the molars at the beginning is absolutely perfect, why should it be changed? Just for you as an example. Also out of this position. 
the intercuspidation at the beginning couldn't be better. So why should we change that? Why does it need to be changed? And for you to understand, it's not a technician that's like, okay, maybe um, let's change a little bit the intercuspidation. It's the automated algorithm by the software that calculates the whole treatment plan but you are the one, you decide which type of movements you really like and need to do and which kinds of movements you like to take out and reduce. So if you create a new clean check plan and I show you the new clean check. If you look at this clean check here, just as a very good example, you can see that in this clean check, there is no movement in the molar area at all. Of course, there is still a derotation of 2.5 because it's needed for this patient, but for example, just have a very, very, uh, uh, have a look at the tooth number three, five. We move it. Yes, but there is no root upriding movement. And because there is no root upriding movement, we do not need a special root upriding movement attachment like a root control attachment. So we could remove the root control attachment and place a very good anchorage attachment to really have enough anchorage for anterior uh, intrusion. So now if we compare both plans, so we compare the first clean check and we with the clean check that was approved by the doctor. And you need to understand that the most important part was to really get out of the deep bite situation, especially in lower arch. On the left side, you see the first clean check with root upriding movement and all this different, uh, all this difficult movements and only 12 aligners for lower anterior intrusion. And it's much better if you decide not to move the molars in this particular case. Have no root, root upriding movements, only a very little bit of extrusion that you have a reciprocal force for anterior intrusion and then you do the intrusion with the frog staging, just as an example, to make it more predictable. What I would like to explain is that even if you if you think it's a very, very simple clean check, and why, why do you need to change it? Focus on are all these movements exactly the movement that you would like to do for this patient or could we maybe change these movements a little bit or reduce them just to make it more predictable for your patient? And the, the best tooth that shows it for me is tooth 1-5. Sorry, 3-5. When you look at this, you can see very complicated root upriding movement. At the same time, rotation. So we lose anchorage for anterior intrusion. So why not getting out of this micro movements and just have a little bit of slowly extrusion and get out of this rotation and root uprighting movements to make the lower anterior intrusion more predictable. So it's always about taking out all, non, all not predictable movements and to make the clean check as much specific for your patient needs. Now we go to clean check number two to explain you even better the algorithms of the software, when to use it, how to use it, when to remove it. Again, clean check number one shows you that the software is always calculating everything if you do not dominate the software in terms of telling the software what not to do and the right priorities. The same you can see here in the second clean check. In this team check, the most important part was to correct the cross bite. For this patient, there were no possibility to use crisscross elastics because the patient is not able to use them. So our part is it to make this clean check even without auxiliary techniques like crisscross elastics as predictable as possible. Now, if we look at this clean check, you can see what the software is calculating. At first, you can see 0 0.2 millimeters, 0 0.4 if you if we take both. So, but we would like to move the six to the buccal, and now the software calculates 
IPR, that means there's even a little more compression within the aligner. So we always try to think the other way around. I try to explain. So if you look at this clean check, you can see that the software is moving one six to the Google at the same time, one seven to the Google at the same time IPR. Why not make it a little easier? And that's very easy to do if we explain to the technician, let's first keep a little space for these type of movements. So why not doing first, so that's the next clean check, why not doing first a little bit of distalization of the seven, sorry, distalization of seven to really keep space. So we always need to control if there's any micro collision, no IPR, but clinically you can do a little bit of IPR, mesial of the six. So distal movement, buccal movement, and at the end, when the cross pile correction is done, a little bit of mesialization. I compare both plans for you um, to have a better view of it. So that was the first clean check from a line and the clean check that was approved. I compare both plans from occlusion view. And now you can see on the left side, the first clean check with IPR and with all movements at the same time, buccal movements. So a lot of compression in the aligner. And on the right side, the new clean check with buccal move, uh, distal movement, buccal movement, mesial movement. And it's only a little part to create a better clean check, but you, you will see you have better results and less refinements. The same situation in the lower arch. If you look on the left side, the first calculation of the software is, okay, the software identify there is a rotated molar. So 4.6 is rotated and needs to be derotated. But the software starts with derotation because that's the algorithm of the software, doing the derotation and then doing the movement to the lingual. But during the rotation movement, the size, the medial distal size of the tooth gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's a lot of compression in the aligner. Why not make it more easy? And if you look on the right side, you can see only lingual movement from the beginning without the rotation. So you are also able to reduce the amount of IPR. Of course, you need to control everything out of this position. Very important. To really see that you end up in a perfect intercuspidation at the end. But you see, it's a kind of round tripping that we calculated to make this movement um, predictable. Distal movement, buccal movement, and at the end, mesial movement. And on the left side, you can see the first calculated clean check. All the movements at the same time, but first rotation and lower arch for a very long time, no lingual movement. And in the upper arch, no round tripping. That means that we do not open space for the cross bite correction. So this is a this is clean check number two I would like to show you. And with this clean check, I would like to explain that you are always able to make a little more out of your clean check, out of your out of your treatment planning, if you focus on what is most important for the patient. And if you want to go out of the cross bite, you're not able to use cross bite correction. This is only an example, but try to figure out and to find out how am I able to make it a little more predictable. Yeah, just for you to use this um, protocol in future. So this is a systematic round tripping. Um, distalization followed by mesialization. And sometimes it really makes sense to use this type of protocols. The next clean check I would like to, uh, to show you, it's clean check number three. Um, in this clean check, I'm talking about monitoring the movements of the software um in any specific way before i talk, before i show you the clean check i need to explain you a little bit more the internal protocol so there are measurement points for movements so these measurement points so we have movement the maximum of movement is 0 0.25 millimeter of translative movement but the software is measuring the movement not only in the middle of the tooth there are different, different types of measuring points. And that means 
that it could be that you do not have the maximum of movement you would like to have in your clean chain. I try to explain. So, for example, if I have a translative distalization movement of 0 0.25, of course, there is no problem. But at the moment, this software is calculating a little more root movement. I have a problem because, first of all, it's not predictable. Secondly, I have less than 0 0.25 millimeter in the crown. But you are the one, you decide how to program this movement. And um, therefore, I would like to show you a clean check. Yes, look at this clean check. You can see, of course, so this is clean check number three. It's discussed. And look at this clean check. Um, and look at the movements of the molar. So look at this seven. First of all, maybe you find out that the velocity is wrong. If you look from occlusion view to the seven, in your preferences, there is a 0 0.25 millimeter distalization, but you can see it is only one millimeter for 15 aligners. So how could that be? It's less than one that's 0 0.1 millimeter each aligner. Why? The reason you will find out very easily. And for you, it's so important to really mm, control every movement very carefully. And then you will find out if you maybe have something inside the software that you do not want to have. And that's a very good example. Because you review from a closure view and you see it's only 0 0.1. Now you review out of this position and you will find out that... It's the first clean check. Ah, there's a reason why it's only 0 0.1, because the software calculated a lot of distal tip for 2.7. Can you see that? A lot of distal tip. Because the measuring is not only in the area of the clinical crown. The Invisalign software is very intelligent, and they have also a measuring in the area of the root. And in the root, there is a movement of 0 0.25. And because of that, we will not achieve more than 0 0.1 in the crown. So what should we do with a clean check like this? We need to set the right priorities. We do not want to have distal tip during the, during the distalization. It's not predictable. And we need a huge amount of aligners. So it doesn't make any sense. What are we doing now? We get out of distal tip. We take this distal rooted out of the clean check and we receive a new clean check. And now you can see in the new clean check, if you review the clean check, you can see, oh yes, we do not have any distal tip. It would be even better if you have a little mesial tip. So, and if you look from a closure view, you can see Just a second. Yes, you have one millimeter with four aligners, and this is what you would like to achieve. Of course, you can reduce the velocity to make the movements more predictable. But <laughs> if the software reduces the velocity because it's doing too much tip in a direction you do not want to go, you make everything less predictable. So again, I showed you three different types of clean checks just to show you that there are always the algorithms of the software, but it owned it also necessary needs your priorities to make the clean check more predictable for your patient. And it's very easy to do. You just need to focus on treatment planning and to focus on what happens exactly in the clean check and then to decide, can I make it easier? Can I make it more predictable? And uh, yes. How can I make it more predictable? What to do? Yeah, so if you liked my presentation for today, um, I would like to explain to you so that um, we created an own Congress. So the Congress is called TPIO, Treatment Planning and Aligner Orthodontics. We did the Congress the first time, 2019. We had over 200 orthodontists from all over the world. So why this Congress is so special? And because 
we have top speakers from all over the world. They show their digital treatment plans, but we always show exactly in detail how we created the digital treatment plan. So it's an interdisciplinary congress between the orthodontists and the technicians. And this is what, what, um, yeah, what, what makes it very unique because um, we go very deep in this detailed de uh, treatment planning. So if you are interested, the next Congress, hopefully live, <laughs> hopefully uh, everything uh, down gets better, uh, 26, uh, 26 to 27th of November 2021. And um, yes, if you would like to have more ideas about digital treatment planning, you can follow us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel regarding uh, yeah, digital treatment planning and tips and tricks for the CleanCheck software. Follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. And um, yes, just go to our website, tpro-congress.com. And there we send out a newsletter once a month to show you the best tips and tricks for digital treatment planning. And I hope you enjoyed everything. And if you have any questions, just um, yeah, send us an email. Go to invisolution.de. There you find our email address. If you have any questions regarding digital treatment planning, please contact us. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Bye-bye.